Chinese Warehouse in the Warehouse Arts District in St. Petersburg. And we are with Chris Baez right here, an artist who is known hey in St. Petersburg, an incredible, incredible artist and muralist who's all around downtown. So what we're going to do today is teach you some tricks of the trade of, of uh, how to spray paint. So let's see. And then we're going to take a newbie and put the spray can in their hand. Let's see how hard it is. Now, Chris always says to me, so Gina, it's really simple. This technique, you don't move your elbow. You move this, you move that. And I'm like, really? Let's see that. If we take a newbie. Let's see if that's truly the case. Come over here. Let me show you. So right now, what Chris is doing is a locker, and he's going to be creating a female on this locker. So Chris, tell us. So basically... Um, tell us a little bit about you. Okay. All right. So you've been around in St. Petersburg yep. doing this for how long? At least seven years painting professionally. I remember meeting mm -hmm. you when you were new. Yeah, downtown. That's how me and Gina met. Um, originally from California, Los Angeles, but I moved here when I was uh, my late teens. And now I live here, and it's just amazing. St. Pete's the uh, best community to come to, just to open and be an artist. And it's so much opportunities that you, people like Gina, they let them pay the warehouse and have a good time. Oh, he's great. He's done so much work around here. Let me just show you a little bit right around here. You can see all here, and there's, there's versions of him everywhere. Yes. So the thing that amazes me about Chris the most is when we had met, um, he was literally newbie. He's a total newbie. So what he totally. said is, I'm going to schlep around and help every <laughs> artist do whatever there is. So I'd be driving around at 2 a.m. And there Chris would be with whatever they circle they told him to, you know, and the whole nine yards. And then I can see this work progress. Yes, you and did. Then, oh, my God, the creativity. And I'm like, hey, try something over here. And he would do all this kind of Level stuff. Level zero to now. Hero. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then what he says, I said, you know what? You, I've seen this enormous transformation. I mean, you're an incredible artist. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be great for you to teach others? So he's like, yeah, I'd love to do that. But again, he makes it sound much easier, I think, than it is. Do yeah, you think it is? Yeah, I agree totally. It's, it's, uh, it's something that you could pick up quickly, but if you have the right person to teach you, you could like go fly on your own. So definitely there's the tricks of the trade, right? Trick of the trades. Yes. Big time. You tell me now, one of these key things that he said is a key and critical that he learned that kind of changed his whole thing. It's a very simple technique. What's that about the shoulder and the arm and the elbow? So with, you know, spray painting in just like tattooing, um, doing lining, especially line work, you want to use your elbow, not your wrist because your wrist is floppy. But if you have your elbow as your movement, as your guide, you'd be able to do and take clean lines like oh, i'll show us. you right now so i'm gonna go down here from this corner to bring it and connect to this line so let's see i'm not using my wrist i'm using my elbow stationary so what do you mean exactly when you're doing this you're saying you're not going and moving your wrist like this yes you're saying your arm is completely my whole, stable yeah my arm basically the only thing my hands doing my wrist is holding the can but with their elbow stationary you can basically have free range to move and and steady straight. So clean lines all the time. Okay, so let's try this. I'm going to give Rick, Pitt, Rick Passaretti is handling the technical part of this portion yeah. of the workshop. So Rick, we're going to go and see how, and it's never held a spray can. <laughs> so let's see. And if he did, it was probably for a, what, a motorcycle or something. I don't know, not this. So here. Why don't you show him and see the technique and see what some of these viewers may be saying, hey, gotcha. is this possible? Yes. Because I'll tell you right now, having a spray can in your hand is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's very liberating. It really it's is. It really is. So, Rick, we're going to do, um, see this line already right here? Yeah. Uh, all I basically want you to do is hold your hand like that. Just hold the can like this. And basically, when you spray too, like a spritz, you want to hit like a spritz. You don't want to power it. You want to... It's kind of like an airbrush. Okay. So, so you just want to lightly get into lightly it. Lightly get into it. And then, uh, and again, just keeping the wrist straight. Yeah. And then and use okay. your body and your elbow at the same time. Okay. So when you do that line, just spritz. Am I just going over the top of this line? Yeah. Okay. Bring it. Yeah. Bring a line next to this line. He's nervous. <laughs> <laughs> you got this, Rick. <laughs> Hey! Good 
Good nice, job. Nice, good nice. job. Solid good in the job. Elbow. You know, that, <laughs> Rick, that was a good job, Rick. So one of the things, and that's really the beginning stage of it, right? Nice. One of the things that I wanted to share with you, you to share with everybody, mm -hmm. is the materials you're using. Because right now, what you did with that line, there are different, I don't know if uh, many of you know, but there's different tips for these spray cans. So what are some of the materials, cans, all of the stuff that you're using? this like this particular kind what makes this spray can different in this paint than home depot right these these cans right here specifically are from german or germany and they're called montana golds which uh you could get locally at artisans at downtown right here on 9th street and third ave north which is a really great source which yes locally yes um you can hit up austin's the owner all of the murals, a lot of the murals, this yep. is what they use. It's, and product really makes a difference. Some people be like, I'm trying to spray paint, but I can't. And you look at it, it's like Home Depot paint. <laughs> but they're supposed to be spraying something very large. Yeah. And these cans, too, are low pressure. So depending on which cans you get, uh, low pressure means that they're coming out smooth and slow and crisp and solid, too. So if you're so getting... what's high pressure? High pressure is like uh, if you're just covering a cover, like uh, we're just spray painting a wall and we just want to fill it in, use high pressure. So now here's a key thing too. I want to show you right here. We have a few different tips right here. If you see this. And there's different sizes and different styles, right? Yes. So even this one right here. Favorites. Yes. Oh my God. Right. So what is some of these? Can you tell people about, can you say one of these things and what they do? I'm yes. going to show you those too. Yes. The, these tips in particular, and they look like regular stock tips, but these tips right here are called New York fat caps. Hope you can see that. And it looks really basic, but these are iconic and they're good for getting high wide uh, sprays. So if you're doing like fill-ins or, you know, if you're just covering a wall that needs to be like a background, New York Fat Caps fills in quick. And also, too, um, skinny caps. You want thin lines. These yellow ones right here are perfect for like crispy, clean, and straight lines. These will get you, they get you those clean, clean ones you really want. You don't want like fat, thick lines. These right here are the ones. And then you got the in-between, which is not thick or you know, too big with the New York fats are these gold cap or orange caps, which they get the, it's like in between the middle, the perfect middle size. So what's really weird is if they're trying to fill in a big area, they have ones that spray all right. over. Yeah. So there's different kind of techniques to these things. And that's why I think when they, he says these things are easy. When you start to know some of the tricks of the trade or some of the materials, the type of product to use, that's like you're that's a big portion of what big we're talking time, about. Big time, big save you time, execute, and that's what you want. You wanna you wanna go in and get out. <laughs> I'll tell you though, the product costs a little bit different. As we were talking about yeah. Matt Cress on the last one, he did a five story or six story building. Mm -hmm. And the material, the spray paint was twelve thousand dollars. So yes, it's definitely not Home Depot paint. Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> Just the material alone was twelve thousand dollars for the paint. And I want to show you something that I found that was super exciting that I didn't know about. Here, if you can put that, like, make that. Because, you know, I can see myself right now. Spray. So one of the cool things that I like is this one right here, right? So this one has this effect. Is it is it on there? Is it working? Yeah. Oh, and these cans, too. You're going to have to make sure you get that ball down because it gets stuck. And you got to shake them really good. Cause they get really, really sticky at first, but then you get it good shakes. But that's like the whole part of the process when you think of yep. a mural, don't you? It's like part of the shaking of the can, the whole nine yards. Now, what I want to challenge all of you to do is actually go out there and do it. Cause that's the thing. Like this doesn't need, you don't need a license to do it. You don't need, you, you seriously can just go out there and start spray painting something. My mower, my riding mower, it's pink. You could start anyway. Tables. Yeah, Charles. chairs. We were, we literally lockers, and one of the things recent. So you do incredible pieces with lockers, which we'll show you some of these pieces here. So this is a great way to sell a product by putting your art on it. That's both useful and and creative, and it fills up a space. And especially when you have someone downtown St. Pete where they don't have enormous space in their apartments exactly. or condos, they can add this, and they have art as well as it's functional. And so it dries we'll, fast. Yes. Yeah. So Chris, do you mind? If I just kind of show, or you actually can kind of show where this drips when you spray on this, this piece, like yeah. where the fun stuff, I love this. 
<laughs> like this was dangerous. When I discovered this, everything got this. <laughs> yeah, with these right here too. Like I'm, I'm gonna do this corner right here real quick. Do you see that? That is just, and if you notice right there. So there's like a dripping. It's dangerous. Yeah. It gives, and you see that with sometimes murals, they have some of that deliberate drip, right? It's of course organic, but there's a sense of it being very deliberate in the sense of like, they want that drip where it is. Yeah. It gives that nice, like, even though it's like dripping, but streets, you know? <laughs> yes. Yes. And here you go. Did you want to do some of the, the want to let you go at it and kind of make it happen? Yeah. Yeah. So when you're doing this, Chris, mm -hmm. can you talk about the difference? Maybe perhaps you could talk about like get another tip and say how that tip might be different, perhaps in filming right. and so forth. So the New York fat is, which is a little stock, little, little stocky guys. These are good. So when I'm doing like a, a let's, let's, let's say pop art and a woman's like fill her face up, these fat caps are easy just to fill in because you don't want to get the skinny caps and just do thin lines and fill. That's not good. It's no. a waste of time. You never want to get a skinny cap. Yeah. <laughs> but look. And this little area too, you'll see how many, I'll fill it in really quick. It's not, and that's what I love about spray paint. It's fast and dries fast. So. See how he's filling in a lot of area and he has this methodical method? Oh yeah, see that was literally, literally seconds. And that's especially, that's again, filled. you saw his elbow too, right? Mm -hmm. All about that elbow. So even, So feel free, everybody, to ask any questions you may want to. We would love the interaction and any kind of questions you may have about doing something like this. Because truly after this, you'll be able to go try that and you'll have all the tools and the basics for doing your own project. Oh, yeah. That was quick. See that whole fill? Yes. Boom. Yes. So, Chris, go inside and let's show them some of the. So let's show you an end result mm -hmm. of what he's doing right now. So come on and visit him. See, as you can see, this is one of, of Chris's pieces right here. Yeah, these this definitely fun to do. <laughs> so with the outside mural, you used just paint. You didn't use spray paint. You no. used paintbrush, right? Paintbrush, so when roller. people are doing these larger pieces, what are your thought process on that, or what can you share with that? Um, I could definitely definitely give advice to anybody doing murals, and you don't have to use spray paint all the time especially with big white pieces and backgrounds, you know, a roller brush can fill in things quicker too. Can you use both? Can you do, let's say part regular paint and the spray paint, or is that kind of a taboo? Scenario? No, no, I, that's actually my favorite way to paint because I'm not over here spray. Your fingers getting tired trying to fill a big giant wall of spray paint. You just get a roller, fill it up, and then you can do the lining for spray paint. And then another thing about collaboration is great too, like what Chris did when he first started, he mm -hmm. helped others. And like what Matt Kress was saying when he did his six story building, he said in order to be able to finish it in the timeline, he'd block out these large areas. And then people who were assisting him would fill in those areas while he was doing other work in order to, for time management. Yes. Right? Is that a good way? Yes, assistance, always beneficial. So as we're doing these blockers, let me show you what we're talking about. And Rick, if you can angle that in the like to see the little, these are the end results over here of these lockers. Okay. So talk a little bit about it. Yeah, so with these lockers. One second, let me just take this out of the way. Yeah. And then I'll give you a hand. <laughs> with these lockers, you get to um you get to see the finished results. Like it's, it didn't take me too long, and, and especially if you got the right caps, you can execute fast. And this is literally maybe tops uh, hour to a half on each locker. I mean, can you imagine that, what we're talking about with the speed? For instance, so you would say definitely, if it, was paint, if it was paint versus spray paint, would you say spray paint is by far how much quicker? Ten times. Ten, ten times, times quicker. So ten I'll show times. you here. So look at this. So this is sort of the piece that he's doing outside right now. Mm -hmm. It's like that similar vibe, which, you know, with spray paint too, you get to layer quick too. That's why I love enjoying spray paint because you get to watch it manifest in, in your face. So you don't have to wait for a dry time. 
and messiness. Cause you know, if you're dealing with hand paint, you're dripping all over where you gotta make sure you got towels to clean off and a drop cloth. So you're not getting paint on the floor where you're painting. At. Yes. Yes. And as you can see, one of the other techniques I really like about Chris is his colors that he puts in together, right? So Chris, these are con these are colors you normally wouldn't see. No, no. I like to mix warm and cool colors, which you see right now, my shirt is like a combination of that. You know, it's cool, warm. Um, you definitely, that's like, it's like, makes you feel emotion that's kind of happy, which so, but that's But you see, you have these two different kind of colors. So, I mean, look at this. You have orange right here yeah. with blue, with purple, right? <laughs> yep. I mean, so when you're thinking of this, is there any kind of secret to the, your color choice? Because I find that you create very bold colors more than I would say, you know, as on average, right? Yeah. You, you mix them. Is there any kind of secret to how you do that? Um, you know what? I always go with, they've always been my favorite, turquoise, purples, and pinks. So I kind of play in that realm. Always have that in my arsenal. I always have like a back of my head, you know, if I'm approaching a project or a commission piece is to add those colors. Yeah. So they're, they're always in my little so Pocket. what we can do is if you meant if you heard what he said he said in approximately half an hour to an hour he's able to complete these pieces mm -hmm. so let's see him do that and in between them when he takes a different tip we'll bring rick back put the can in his hand and let's yeah. see how it did because i think he did pretty good with that that line that he did right oh yeah he did, he did a pretty clean <laughs> line which honestly that's really surprising because mm -hmm. that's not always easy so the technique you're using because what happens is sometimes you spray that'll be very very thick line and it'll yeah. be a lot of spatter. So it's like the feel of it's, like how the tip, right? Like, what did you say? You don't press like really hard. You put like- Give a little spritz, a little a little tap. You don't have to do a, a solid pull down spray. And the other part of this too, which is really important is how fast do you move down? Like you're doing this line, but do you like, or do you wait, or do you go slower? How's the motion in this? That's thing? the magic. It's the lines yeah. are key in this situation. That's the key with the cans we're using. These specific cans that I got from Artisans, are uh, low pressure, so I could literally drag a line as slow as I want, and it'll be smooth. It's not gonna be nice. splatter ever. Nice. So let's go see him finish this piece that he claims he could do it. <laughs> let's well, go. Actually, thirty minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think these are great products too, like we were talking about. When oh yeah. About um, you know having some kind of gifts or anything like that for someone come purchase something so it's both useful and art together all so right as you're doing certain things you realize you could tell and let people know could you just stop and kind of give a little bit of a yeah so basically uh what's this tip you're showing like show them this and this type of can as well so this is a montana 994 and these are from Spain. These cans are low pressure. Also, too, I'm using a, a yellow skinny cap, which the yellow skinny cap is going to give me, like, the nice small areas that I don't want to do a, a big spray. So if I'm filling in small, small areas, the yellow cap that you get at Artisans is perfect, especially, if, like, little thin lines for the hair. So you can see right now I'm going to do the hair pieces. And the same thing with Gina was talking about, I can literally take my time. I don't have to rush. It's literally effortless. Just like a paintbrush would. This is like equivalent to the best thing you could get as a painting with a brush. Is this 1994 Montanas, which are my favorite, by the way. They're just crisp, nice. And not a big overspray, too. That's one thing about spray paint. You get from Home Depot, the regular Rustos, they're everywhere. So you don't have that can control. That's why these are very favored when you're painting out in the outside. And they, fast, they dry so fast. Because you get to see your, your piece evolve so quick. That. And if I want to embellish more, I should come from down here.
but it's always the tips will save you with everything. There's been times I've done pieces where I uh, I had the right tips. I had to get to do a clean executions. But look at that. That was fast. That wasn't bad at all. That was like literally <laughs> five minutes. <laughs> but that's the thing you want to remember is if you got the right pressure cans, you could do this type of style. This is And this is just a locker, too. It's not nothing crazy. Right. So, Chris, I've seen you move really super fast. I'm mm -hmm. curious. We challenged you. With you stopping and telling which chips and stuff you're using the product, how fast can you do this? Want to show us? Yeah. Let's do it. By the way, whenever an artist has done work here or where I'm working with them and they don't have the right tips, I stop everything because it's really, really super important. Right, Chris? Yes. The tips and the product. So important. Big time. Got it. Always make sure you shake your cans too. Are there any different tips you're using? Are we using the which one? Skinny ones? tips. Skinny tips. Skinny tips. Because these tips, are, uh, I'm using like a a small little piece, so we'll get all the lips, every little crevice we got right here. All right. Hey, Chris, what do you think about, you say it's so easy. Let's have Rick try and see if he could fill that in. Do you, you think it's what? possible? Yes, I think he can. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, don't, don't do that to me. He's been handling tech all day. So I'm like, for sure, you're getting in there. All right. So I'm going to give you the red can and skinny cap. All right. This Any tips just, before? This is the tip for the beginner. What's the tip? <laughs> yeah. Tip so this, the day. Yep. <laughs> And right, in, so. in, in anything, I would suggest to give it the shape, do the outline, the shape, and then go in the middle. So outline right. and fill in the middle. Remember, right. it's just paint, so don't worry. Yeah. Yeah, so nobody will die in the outcome if I mess this up. <laughs> <laughs> but so, people will be me. <laughs> well, people will be extremely disappointed in you. Uh, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, oh, I think what we got is a. I got you right here. Right? All right. So that's a common thing as well. During the process, you might find some cans or the tips, and there's tricks to that trade too. We'll ask Chris about. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Got the guidance. So Chris, how does he make his line thinner? That was pretty darn good. Well, those, uh, are, some, those are some thick lips. <laughs> <laughs> Not too bad. Not too bad. <laughs> All right. Am I gonna? Can we do the bottom up? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This time I'm going to incorporate elbow control. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Awesome. It feels good. Huh? Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah it, it feels really like you have that control. Yeah. All right. I'll give that back to you so I won't uh, mess those lips up. So how did more. it feel? So give us oh. a perspective. You know, you have well, not spray painted. So no. how does it feel? What are some of the, the complications that you had during that process? Was it? easy or hard? No, or? I mean, honestly, it's, it is definitely like a, a learning curve on that because I didn't know how close to be with it. <laughs> and, and, and even though it, it, it felt like a, you know, the, the type of tip it was, it, it, it still felt like it was 
spraying thicker than and you know mm -hmm. and i'm trying to figure out yeah so it's definitely like a lot of like i would love to fool around with like all three, so is there that's a really three, good point chris yeah. is it a certain distance that you would do yes. like so is it a certain distance that you would do from from the the piece right yeah. when you're spray painting that's a really good point yeah you don't want to go too far because it's going to get like a fade effect but you want to get close enough to where it's not too close so i'll say at least two inches to an inch um while you're applying because it it if you're going too close it's gonna get drippy even with these guys these they even those low pressure is still gonna drip which you don't want to be too close so i will say about two inches right here and you get to fill it in too also too like with this i could clean it up that's the good thing about spray paint if you got a little mess up you know you could come back with the, the other paint that you have and you could clean it up which i'm using a skinny cap right now and so I'm going to do, oh, fix that guy. I'm going to go here. Wow, you're really close there. You're fairly close. Mm -hmm. So right here. Perf. Excellent, yeah. excellent, excellent. Crispy. That's beautiful. That's wonderful. And it was really if only a few kind of key pieces that you were actually even like a few lines and you created something. Yeah, literally, literally. That's why I love about spray paint. It's fast. It's fast, rewarding for artists. <laughs> One of the things too, though, with this is letters. So letters is super, not the easiest thing to do, right? Absolutely not. Right? Yeah, no. You, know, you kind of like, so um, is there anything you could write on this and kind of show people of what some of the tricks may be? How about yeah. on the side? Yeah, I could do over here. Let's see. let's see. So let's do a uh, little trees in our way. Let's do a little uh, G. Okay. Okay, you got to tell some of the secrets of that because, first <laughs> of all, it's completely even. Yeah. Right? <laughs> And you, what are the tricks of that? So um, basically, when you start painting with spray paint after a while, you start getting this muscle memory. And that's when the magic happens. That's when you can create this. But basically, I kind of could feel it out already. And I know the pressure. So especially with the skinny caps, I can create the slow flow. So once I'm doing a line... I have full control so I could like literally drag it anywhere I want and slowly you're not moving your wrist as well you're you, doing that yeah. elbow is com being completely still elbow is all about the elbow it's and then your elbow is like stationary too so one and, of the things is do you have to have an artistic background because I remember in the beginning right you mm -hmm. learned throughout like so what was that learning curve how did you get that because it wasn't do you feel like there needs to be an artistic background? Yeah, yeah, definitely sketching every day. Sketching every day builds uh, your creative muscle. Your creative muscle is your, your whatever you want to call it, your creative eye, your creative insight as an artist. So, for example, if you're mocking up designs for businesses or something like that, you'd be able to uh, whimp, like whip it up just like if you're cooking some food. You know, you're like, oh, I know what to do. You have a cold? I'm going to cook you some soup, you know? with you know carrots celery etc same thing with painting you know oh i uh I'm, i have a barbecue spot what can mural can you paint for my barbecue spot so you, it's like that and you get to whip up ideas so i've seen you do a lot of yeah things you post as well and when you were doing faces you said that there's a way to do faces to make them geometric to make them there's a trick or a what is that scaling that you said the, the what did you the say grid. the grid so when you we definitely when you're doing upscale and big murals giant murals you always want to grid it out um it either projection you know projectors fine too some people will like oh it's projector but if you're doing commercial work logo work is definitely not it's definitely beneficial but a uh, uh, very good point with the projector with the logos yes you, that's not yes. the creative interpretation necessarily. no and it's commercial too is crucial we knew like logos designs and two it, it, it time you save time you know you're not going to spend hours cleaning up a design piece that you're trying to paint for a company it's super fast and, and and convenient but you know uh 
a fun method when you don't have a projector in hand is a grid system. The grid system, it's really cool because you could do, let's say we're doing a piece and grid it out like maybe a foot, a, a foot a block each in each grid. So let's say on a 10 by 10, I put uh, at least maybe like I'll grid, I'll do six blocks, you know, grid and three on each, each row. So three blocks per row. If you show it with the face that you're saying, it's just an idea of like a grid, you know, just even grid it out straight on there. Okay. What would be a grid that you would say that you would do to make this geometric? Place? So for this piece in particular, I would put it in three blocks. So let's divide this whole entire piece in three sections. So here, I'll even use this blue because the blue will show you how I separate. Usually I measure it out too. So if, if you're going to measure, you got to measure this equally. But you know, I, I right now we're going to show you a quick. So how would you measure that with an actual? Measuring tape. Gotcha. Measuring tape, yeah. Gotcha. But with this, three sections is fine. It's skinny. It's not, you don't need like a big giant grid. So I'll divide it in three. So probably right here to right here. And literally you can look. And this, in each section, you know where the nose and the lips are. And the top is the forehead and the hair. And the bottom is the bottom lip and the chin and the hair. Is that usually the, the, the breakdown of the, the, the yeah, face? Yeah, yeah. Usually the breakdown. So you don't want to – it helps you, guide you, and execute quick. So sometimes Gina comes out, uh, asks me to paint something, and she comes out, leaves, and comes right back. And she's like, whoa, dude, you just – you just finish that <laughs> it's because i do the grid system you know it's it's it helps you go in the flow state it keeps you there you know you're not lost you're not spending hours so and you can yep. match the sketch that he does he breaks it up in a grid so he's able to take these pieces exactly. and he goes, okay here's this painting or this, this drawing i did you know puts it in a grid and knows that that block to do and kind of takes the chunks out at yeah once. and this was all stuff when i first met him seven years ago knew that this was not any he wanted to spray paint he wanted to draw he did not yeah. So that's why I think it's so amazing. And then you see some of the magnificence, if you could see and span the right evolution here. <laughs> yeah, like if you can for the, like you could see, there's been a great evolution there. Mm -hmm. So, and that's, it really starts with being pretty simple with everything. And, um, but yeah, I just, you know what? Why don't you just do whatever you want to do and let's close that out. Is there anything you want to say, Chris? Because I think this has been really inspirational for people not to be so nervous yeah. about taking that yeah. and spray. Yeah, I think big time. And where do we find you? Um, you can find me on Instagram at skycaptain underscore underscore Chris Baez. Say that again. At skycaptain Sky underscore underscore all right. on Instagram. You have all my artwork there. You have all my catalogs, all St. Pete murals I've done. But uh, definitely, you know, I like to say is that don't be afraid to play with spray paint. Get to it. You might even become an artist just like me, you know, beginner stage and then evolve into professionalism. And if you want him to do something or even if you want to take a class because he's going to be teaching classes, mm -hmm. reach out to him. He's one of the most patient people I've ever met. I, it, absolutely. <laughs> and he feels very passionate about spreading art and love. Yes. That's one thing yeah. about you or two things. You're Especially amazing. in St. Pete. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely art classes, like hit me up on my uh, email at artbychrisbias at gmail.com. And B-A-E-Z. -E and just uh, send me some questions. We could get something started ASAP. Yeah, he would love to do that. Love to. Beautiful. Oh, look, we have it posted right there. Thank you. That's fantastic. Yes. Go spray away and do whatever right. you want. I love it. I love it. I love it. And this another thing is really, really cool to watch. <laughs> Oh my God, she was missing an eyebrow? She was missing an eyebrow. Good Lord. <laughs> yeah, we'll fix this little thing I did right here. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's kind of cool effect. I like that little line going through. I do too. Silver in there. This is Gina's favorite cap right here. I love it. I love the drip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love this silver. Isn't it beautiful? Yes. Get that drip in there. showed was that you can be look at this isn't this awesome what you really showed is you could be really playful super super playful with this this and oh, you could yeah. be super fast i mean as you Quick. can see i mean that's the thing too yeah and you can do it and if you make a mistake the biggest thing is what you can repaint it, you just repaint it. <laughs> that's it you, you just repaint get it. that in your hands get it because i'm telling you it's addictive I know the first time I got a few spray cans, right? You yes. left them over here, and I went. We did our first one. <laughs> Actually, you want to come see it? Yeah. Oh, gosh, let's, yeah. Let's show so this is how I did it. I said, I don't know. I know paint, but I don't know spray paint. He said, <laughs> let's do it. Let's show them. So I said, okay. So he said, why don't we just do a projector? And I said, okay. So we took a projector. I grabbed a picture off the internet I liked. Literally grabbed a picture from the internet. <laughs> Put it on the wall right here. Here she is. And we projected it. And I like things all backwards and upside down. So I put the legs up here and I put that here. And then I sprayed it. And I remember I was like really nervous. Rick was so much more aggressive. I was like, and then all of a sudden, and then I did it. I was awful. I was awful. It was like you couldn't even see it. I was terrible. But then I got addicted. Yes, I remember that. I remember that day. Look at this. See, and that's with the thing with the, you see these thin lines with the caps. We would get that thin, nice Christmas with those uh, clean caps, the skinny caps. So I challenge you, it doesn't have to be on a wall. It doesn't even have to be on a locker. It could literally be anywhere. And just, yep. it, it's super fun. So after that, I spray painted everything. <laughs> <laughs> literally, literally, <laughs> statues, everything. <laughs> Haven't been done yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's so great, Chris. So, anything, any pointers, uh, you know, as the last kind of little pointers that you can give or inspiration for someone who wants to do something like this but feels like they don't have the skill set? I feel like definitely now, now we live in a time where we could go on YouTube and research other artists who have done it before. And that's been, uh, I feel, for any other artist that's just starting, especially with spray painting, um, look at other artists to see how they do it especially techniques once you learn techniques you uh the world is yours you can play on your whenever you want especially with spray paint and it's not hard to do really not you don't need a license you don't need to go to school you just need maybe 50 bucks worth of spray paint you can get an artisan locally and you're good to go I love it. Thank you so much, Chris. Mm -hmm. You've been an inspiration to yes. St. Petersburg, everything. I adore you. You're just an amazing soul. He is. He's such a kind soul, and it's always sharing his art and, and his knowledge with other people. Thank you, everyone, for watching us. This has been an incredible art, yes. art workshops that yes. we've had this week. Thank you for the opportunity, everyone. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you. Thank you.